Okay, so this is actually an edit to the original video. I don't usually edit videos, but I made a obvious mistake here. I said that the Hesperides derives from Sephirad when it's supposed to say the Sephirad derives from the Hesperides. So you'll notice that mistake when I play this video. And I've also decided to add an additional source to the end of the video. Very interesting source that could maybe bring this together. So let me play that video for you and then we'll look at that interesting source at the end. Welcome to our follow-up video on Hercules, son of Zeus. In the previous video, we didn't speak about the life stories of Hercules. We do have the 12 labors, and this is what Hercules is most famous for. We're not going to study all these labors because this is not a channel specifically about mythology, but I'll try to just give a brief version of this uh, story, how I understand it so far. We have Hera, Queen of the Gods, and it says that she was the sister and the wife of Zeus. So we, we did say in the previous video that um, we have to be careful, but you, know, you can't avoid everything, but there is a lot of evil in this mythology. So I do try, you know, select what um, I present, but you can't avoid everything. So Hera, the sister and the wife of Zeus, and we learn she's very jealous and vengeful. And according to the mythology, Hercules is a product of an adulterous affair. So it's not directly Hera's son. So she despises Hercules, and we even have some versions of her you know, trying to kill Hercules as a child, trying to prevent his birth. So basically, it's because of Hera that um, Hercules has to go become a wanderer and complete these 12 labors because Hercules didn't have didn't have a kingdom to rule over also because of Hera you know so he became a wanderer and then we have these stories of him you know killing monsters he also is a famous founder of cities we've learned about him possibly being the founder of Sparta having many sons and then leaving them behind to rule over regions but is there another part of Hercules that we um, that we don't really get from the Greek mythology? Because you know, if you go through the Greek mythology, you wouldn't really picture Hercules as the Egyptian pharaoh, like we were learning about in the previous video. We're going to look at this labor, the apples of the garden of the Hesperides. Because this could be connected to our picture and the, the work we're doing with North Africa and the Mediterranean. So let's just first look at this word because, you know, according to the mythology, so the Hesperides or the Hesperia, it says here that Italy, so the country of Italy being named Hesperia or the Western land. And then we also have here Hesperia for the Iberian Peninsula and North West Africa and further to the west. So the idea of this word being connected to the western land. So this gets interesting because I came across this work. It's by Carlos Zoria. So Spain in the Bible from Tarshish to Sepharad. And the theory is saying, you know, when did this word Tarshish or this region Tarshish become known as Sepharad? And if you are new to the channel, Tarshish, from the Bible, we're having these connections to southern Spain with a semi-mythological kingdom in southern Spain. And Tarshish, you know, an important um, location in the Bible. We're going to you know, see how it also impacts the history with the, with the Israelites. And it speaks about um, the Tyrians and slavery. So the Phoenicians or the Tyrians and their practice of slavery. 
And I also want to go to a verse from the book of Obadiah because this could be connected to what the what the scholar is going to you know, speak about. So it says, The captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Sepharad, shall possess the cities of the south. Okay, so the captivities of Jerusalem. So, you know, a large amount of Israelites in the region of Sepharad. And the scholar is saying... You know, when did when did Tarshish become called or become known as Sepharad? And we have this identification with southern Spain. So then would this be saying the captivity of Jerusalem, which is in Tarshish? You know, that's what the scholar is arguing. So let's just jump down to something very interesting. So according to this scholar, Now he's of the opinion that this this Hesperides, you know, connected to one of these labors of Hercules, derives from Sepharad. So very interesting if that's true, because if we go down to this part here, this could be very important. Just, um, I think I went past it. Here it is. The Greeks called Spain Sparta or Sepharad. So, very, very interesting because if the Greeks called Spain Sparta and Obadiah is saying that this captivity is in the land of Sepharad, you know, is that saying that the, there'd be a large amounts of Israelites in Spain? So do we have history to show large, ama large amount of Israelites in Spain? But this is important for our picture because Lydia was known as Sparta to the Persians. They, um, they called the satrapy of Lydia, they called it Sparta, or we could say Sepharad. So is that actually saying that um, Lydia could be connected with Spain. So if we just go through those details again, you know, the scholar is connecting Tarshish with Sepharad, that at some point the name Tarshish was stopped, it wasn't used, and became, um, Sepharad was then used. So that would connect Sepharad with uh, Tarshish. And then it also has this example of the Greeks calling Spain Sparta or Sepharad. So yeah, this could be quite important because if we go to a map, so we get an idea about the geography. So we told this kingdom of Lydia was, let's say, Anatolia or Asia Minor, or this mother, modern day country of Turkey. But we did say, should we be looking for Troy towards the Atlantic with the Atlantic researchers? You know, should we also be looking to find Lydia towards the west? And the scholar is connecting it with these, um, with the mythology with the Hesperia and the Hesperides, which does have this meaning of, you know, Western land. But is he correct that this word, um, the Hesperides, could be connected with Sparta and Sepharad? So I'm not sure. It's obviously a very interesting connection. But even if it's not, we still have the the Greeks, according to this, calling Spain Sparta. And Lydia was known as Sparta to the to the Persians. So we have this connection of Spain with Sparta, Sepharad, and with Lydia. Now there's another connection that I've come across could um, it could also support this idea of looking for Lydia to, to the west and we're going to do that by looking at Menes so we said we're going to look at Menes an Egyptian pharaoh but 
it says they haven't been able to identify Menes, so still an ongoing debate. But it's supposed to be the, the pharaoh that united Upper and Lower Egypt. So it's just interesting that we have on the mythology a very similar name. We have Menes, the founder of Lydia. This is according to Herodotus. So another son of Zeus. And it says that Menes was the father of Attis. And Attis was the father of Lydus, after whom the Lydian people were later named. So this mythology of Herodotus connecting the kingdom of Lydia with the mythology. So Menes of Zeus. So Lydia being connected with the descendants of Zeus. And it also says the another descendant of Attis called Terhenus, after whom the Terhenians were named. And we have spoken about the Terhenians and the Sea Peoples with the Etruscan civilization. So the basis of this story is that there was a severe famine in the time of Attis and they, desi they decided to half the population. So half would stay and then half would go with Terhenus. So he became the savior of the nation, you know, coming to Umbria, Italy, and became known as the Terhenians. And then we have this connection with the Etruscans. So that's the story of the Etruscans according to Herodotus. You know, saying, if I go to a different map, that the Etruscans, they come from Lydia, and it's with this um, mythology of Menes and this family. But this is disputed by other historians and say that you know the Etruscans are not connected with the with the Lydians. And we'll speak about that at the end with um, some other sources about you know archaeology. But the interesting thing with this is that Herodotus says that the um, that Lydia was ruled over by the descendants of Hercules. We don't see Hercules here in the um, in this genealogy, but Hercules is connected with Lydia. So let's try explore this. So this is where it kind of gets a little bit confusing, and you can get lost in this mythology, and it can be very um, confusing. One of our viewers was saying you have to be careful with these you know, genealogies because now we have Terhenus as a descendant of Hercules and it speaks about Terhenus the son of Hercules being connected with the with the Etruscans so it's like the same story but now it's you know of Hercules and Strabo also says that that Attis was a descendant of Hercules. So if we go back to this page. So we've got Manes, the son of Zeus. And we know Hercules was a son of Zeus. And we have Terhenus. And we have Attis being described as descendants of Hercules. So one way to try and make sense of this would be that Manes could be another name for Hercules. And then you'd have to ask as well, could Menes be connected with the, with Hercules? But you have to be careful. You can't just, um, you don't, <clears throat> you have to be careful that you're making connections and you, you know, you've got no way of proving it and you don't know. But we did see Sir Isaac Newton with this source with the Empire of Egypt, with all these um, names that they could all be connected and be the same person. So if that's true, you know, he also connects Memnon with Menes. So Menes could be connected with Hercules and Hercules being Egyptian pharaoh. Very interesting. And the final thing for this video is to speak about Sardis because it says that um, Herodotus recounts a legend that the city was founded by the sons of Heracles. So Her Hercules being connected with the founding of Sardis and Sardis the capital of Lydia now this name Sardis could also be coming from, 
from Sparta or Sepharad. We see Sparta. So, you know, is that actually being connected with, uh, with Spain? But the interesting thing is that we do have another son of Hercules called Sardus. And it, said that, it says that Sardus left Libya with a great multitude. So another multitude, uh, sorry, a multitude of people. But this is coming from Libya, coming to Sardinia. And that Sardinia was named after Sardus, son of Hercules. So this island Sardinia is actually carrying this uh, element Sardus. Let's go to the map. So this island here called Sardinia you know, is coming from this word Sardus. And we actually have in the mythology a descendant of Hercules called Sardus coming with the great multitude and Sardus, sorry, Sardinia being named after Sardus. So, yeah, what do you make about this? Because, you know, looking at this map, we're told Lydia is here in the bottom of the country of Turkey and there's the, you know, the capital Sardus. But now we have Lydia being connected with this word Sepharad and Sepharad being connected with Spain. And Sardus, we're being told, is you know, could have been founded by descendants of Hercules. And we do see one of these descendants of Hercules actually carrying this name Sardus, but he's coming to Sardinia. And Sardinia being named after Sardus. So it just makes me wonder, is... Um, is Sardinia connected with this kingdom of Lydia? So you have like two connections. We have Spain and the Greeks calling Spain Sparta. Just a bit of a recap that Lydia was also called Sparta you know, to the Persians. And we also have Sardinia being called, or maybe, you know, it's according to the mythology, named after a descendant of Hercules. So Hercules seems to be strongly connected to to Lydia, the kingdom of Lydia. But when we look at this uh, genealogy that Herodotus gives us, we're not seeing Hercules in these names. But in other sources, both of these characters, Attis and Tohenus, are described as descendants of Hercules. So, yeah, we have to be careful that we don't make uh, links that we're not sure about, but... The only way to kind of make sense of that would be to say, you know, is Manes actually another name for, for Hercules? And could that connect him to, to Menes? So very interesting. And I just want to finish with this last part where this says that, now remember, we said that there are scholars that, well, there were historians that were disagreeing with Herodotus that the Etruscans came from Lydia. You know, saying that there's no connections with the Etruscans and the Lydians. And it says here as well about that the, there's no archaeological evidence to support the idea of a Lydian migration to Etruria. So the Etruscans. So if we just think about that, that they're, they're saying there's no evidence to support this migration. But they only considering, you know, Lydia here. So, you know, if this is not true, then you sh we shouldn't be looking for evidence for this migration here. What about the mythology that's saying that Sardus and this multitude came from Libya, coming towards Sardinia? So maybe there could be truth to what Herodotus is saying. We just need to consider maybe a different route for, for the Etruscans. Okay, so now this is going to be an extra bit to the video. So let me just uh, make sure everything's right. So I'm going to change screen. So I also want to just add this to the video as well, because using the source, so Isaac Newton saying that Menes is the same as Memnon, you know, according to this research, 
just want to show you where it actually speaks about this so you can read it for yourself. So you, know, you can pause that and read this for this connection between Menes and Memnon. So we were left off, we were saying that um, according to the, the evidence, there's no archaeological evidence for this, um, for this migration from Lydia to Etruria. And it also says here that this culture has no ties to Asia Minor or the Near East. So something doesn't seem right here with the with these details because Herodotus, you know, is known as the father of history, saying that the, the Etruscans come from Lydia. But then we do have um, other Lydian, Lydian historians saying that the Etruscans are not Lydians. And then this res research saying that there's no connections between Lydia and the Etruscans. So what I'd like to do is show you this um, this um, source that I'm going to add to this video. It doesn't seem like it wants to load now. Let me just make sure it's loading. It's quite an interesting one. It's um, it's about uh, the Etruscans and their connection to the to the Libyans. So the the ethnological affinities of the ancient Etruscans, and luckily we've got access to this. And what I'm going to do is, like I was going to explain, I've been struggling with the sore throat this week and struggling with my voice. So I was struggling to get through that video, but I think I just about managed to get through it. So I'm not going to read this out. Hopefully you can just pause it and read it if you want to get the details. But what the just the basis I'm going to just say for this video is that we have this connection of the Etruscans, all these different connections with the Etruscans and the Libyans. So this scholar connecting the Etruscans with the Libyans and saying according to the Etruscans, you know, they say they they came from the sea from the south. So isn't this very interesting that you know according to the Etruscans they say they came from the sea from the south. And then we uh, kind of repeated myself quite a lot so I'm not going to repeat all those things again but the um, the mythology telling us that we have these great multitude of men coming from Libya towards Sardinia so coming into this region from Libya and then we've got that source saying that the Etruscans say they come from the south and we have all those connections with the with the Etruscans and the Libyans so it is a bit confusing but maybe everyone could be right in a way with what they're saying so maybe Herodotus is correct, saying that the Etruscans come from Lydia. And then maybe also those other historians that say, you know, the Etruscans aren't Lydians. And then the modern researchers saying there's no evidence for for this migration from Lydia. But, you know, they're thinking about this region of the modern day country of Turkey. They're not considering a migration from Libya and trying to connect the, you know, the Etruscans with the Libyans. I just want to show you this image to finish this video. Now this relief could actually be showing you know, three Lydian men. So this is what the Lydians could have looked like. Now I don't think the, the scholar who is connecting the, the Etruscans with the Libyans you know, is picturing you know, males that look like this. I think he's picturing something different. So. I'm just going to give you my thoughts on this and then you know, let me know if you think it's a fair assessment. So we have to remember that we also have Lud, son of Shem. So Lud, son of Shem, and Josephus says that they are now called the Lydians. So the Lydians actually coming from Shem. So is that actually what we're looking at here with this picture? Would these actually be, you know, Shemites? And then when we think about the Etruscans, and Herodotus is saying that the, the Etruscans come from Lydia, just because they come from Lydia, it doesn't mean they actually have to be Lydian. So that's just my take on this, if we go to this source, when we're looking at manners of Lydia. So this is the mythology, and it's coming from Zeus. So it's not coming from Shem. So when it says that the Lydian people were named after Lydus. You know, it doesn't mean that these Lydian people are coming from Zeus. You know, this could be a royal family you know, ruling over 
different tribes, different people, and those people being named after you know a character after a person. So that's my take on on this. That you know the Etruscans coming potentially from Libya to Italy. You know they may be coming from Lydia, but it doesn't actually make them Lydian. And the you know the Lydians could actually be, you know, like I said, sure, coming from Shem as Shemites, and maybe that's why we're getting a lot of this confusion, where, you know, Lydian historians are saying that the, that the Etruscans are not Lydians, which would be correct, if this um, if this source is correct, connecting the Etruscans with the with the Libyans of North Africa. So let me know if. Um, if you think that assessment might be quite um, fair, and then is the methodology actually supporting the um, the information? Because it's speaking about this migration from Libya towards Sardinia, so that would be Libyans coming towards Italy, and now we do having these researchers connecting the the Etruscans with the Libyans. So that's all I wanted to add for this video. It's going to um, be very important to think about, you know, where was this kingdom of Lydia? Was it really towards the west with all those things that we went through? And, you know, that connection with Spain and also the um, captivity of Israel. You know, is that also connected with this um, information and with Sepharad and Spain? So we can also see we have Media and the Medes. You know, there's a history between Lydia and the Medes. We did do a foundation video for the Medes already, and I'd like to do another video on the Medes. So that'll be the next one if we are um, able to do another video. Let me know what you think about the, the playlist so far. It's um, I was trying to think of a way to describe what we've done. We've, we've got a lot of information. We've got a lot of very interesting um, elements that we've covered, but it's still not clear how it all comes together. And it can be quite frustrating when you can't see the you know the picture. But hopefully, you know, soon we're going to be able to draw some conclusions and also maybe see how this picture could come together. But we just have to maybe explore a little bit more and be patient. And hopefully, um, yeah, hopefully we'll get to the truth and we'll see, you know, what is the true history for this region in North Africa coming to the Mediterranean and then how does it also impact the you know Israel and the Holy Land so thank you for watching this video and we'll see you in the next one